Welcome back. In the last video we talked about how blood moves through the body and then how the actual chemical composition changes as it moves through the body. So what I'll do in this video, I'll cover the next top point, which talks about donated blood and the components extracted from that blood. So I read the actual top point, it says students will analyze information from secondary sources to identify the products extracted from donated blood and discuss the use of these products. There's two parts to this top point. First, we have to identify what actually what products are there in donated blood, and then we have to discuss what these products are used for. So what I'll do first, I'll quickly talk about whole blood. So whole blood is just a normal blood. So when you donate blood, that's the blood you actually donate, whole blood. But this whole blood has different components that it makes. So whole blood is a mixture between different components, and this is what we can find. The major components of blood are these. So we have plasma, which I've written here. We have white blood cells, which are these ones here, and there, I've written that there. We've got our platelets. Again, it makes up a tiny percent, so less than 1%. That's our written platelets here. And we have red blood cells, so 45% of our blood is red blood cells. More than about 55% is plasma, and the tiny rest of it are your white blood cells and your red blood cells, uh, your white blood cells and your platelets. What kind of role do these have in our body? Well, red blood cells, if you remember, they help us carry oxygen. So if they help carry oxygen and they also help remove carbon dioxide. So it was oxyhemoglobin, the red blood cells had their hemoglobin and it was oxyhemoglobin if they carry oxygen and carbamino hemoglobin if they help us remove carbon dioxide. But that was the role of red blood cells to carry oxygen, that was the main role, and also to help us remove carbon dioxide. And the role of plasma was it just dissolved stuff. So plasma was mostly water, so it it helped us dissolve substances, such as amino acids and glucose, and there are also other factors. So I'll talk about the other factors, some of them called immunofactors and the like, that are also in blood, but it's just a, a huge soup of things which are important for our normal function. So plasma was that water component to make sure that blood actually flows. We also have white blood cells, and these were our immune systems. So this is our immune system. These white blood cells, you can imagine them to be the police of our body, they make sure that any foreign invaders are killed. And of these cells here, we have our macrophages and the monocytes, neutrophils, basophiles, all these are all white blood cells. And they're a lot bigger than the platelets and the erythrocytes, this is red blood cells. But these are all white blood cells and they help our protect our body from foreign invaders. And we also have the platelets and these help us with blood clotting. So these are responsible for blood clotting. And one of the major things we needed for is wound healing as well. Wound healing, not healing. Um, wound healing. So we have this here being our. Like, this might be a, you know a scab, but this form is because platelets actually make sure this happens. So these were some of the components and what they're used for in the body. But we haven't discussed the uses yet. So this was just a general introduction, and I'll go over the actual um, products and their uses. So we have red blood cells which are, again, these were our oxygen carriers. So we need to have these to make sure we can make ATP, for cellular respiration. And red blood cells, they often get used in something for people who have patients, so people who suffer from anemia. Anemia is something where you have lack of iron, so not enough iron. This could be because of deficiency in terms of your diet, or it could be genetic. But the problem is because you have no, not enough iron, that means you can't make enough hemoglobin. And when you can't make enough hemoglobin, you also make less red blood cells. So what you can imagine here, this picture here, this is normal. So the normal amount we should have, but people who have anemia have a lot less. So you can see here, this is, might be just a third of what we should have in this example. And that means people who have anemia don't have enough oxygen carriers, which means if they do exercise, for example, They'll get really tired because they don't carry enough oxygen in their blood, which means they don't produce enough ATP, and that's our energy. So we need to make sure we give people who have anemia red blood cells, especially if they have a severe form of anemia. 10% of all females do have anemia because that's quite normal. But if it's a severe form, we want to make sure we have give them red blood cells because that means they're going to be less fatigued and have more energy. 
Now, white blood cells, and these were our like, police people, or police guards of our body, and they make sure they fight infections. So, white blood cells help us fight infection. And what's the use? Like, what do we use it for? We use it for people who have, who undergo chemotherapy. So, you know, remember, chemotherapy is if a patient tries to get rid of cancer. So, chemotherapy is related to cancer. If a patient has cancer, they want to kill all the bad cancer cells. But the problem is when they kill all the bad cancer cells, they don't only just kill the cancer cells, but they also kill all the white blood cells in their body, or many of them as well. So when they try to kill the cancer through the chemotherapy, they also kill by accident. They kill quite a few of the good white blood cells. So we inject white blood cells into them from other people to make sure they have a working immune system. So chemotherapy was why we use white blood cells when it comes to white blood cell donations. We also have platelets. Now, people who suffer from leukemia, especially little children, the problem with leukemia is also a form of cancer, and this cancer has to do with the blood. So this is cancer of the blood. And people with leukemia often have a deficiency in platelets. So they actually get platelets injected to them to make sure they have enough again. So we use it for leukemia, that's one of the uses. Another one was for people who generally have something called platelet platelet deficiency disorder. And that's not too common, but if you either have leukemia or platelet deficiency disorder, then we give people their platelets. I forgot one more reason why we need to have red blood cells, just to make sure before I forget again, is red blood cells are also important for people who have accidents. So any blood loss, so accidents, or rapid blood loss, we also give them red blood cells to make sure that their normal oxygen carrying capacity isn't too um, lowered. So for accidents and for anemia with the red blood cells. Platelets were leukemia patients and platelet deficiency disorders, and white blood cell was, was chemotherapy patients. And plasma, this is for people who have clotting problems, so clotting deficiency. And there are some people who have clotting deficiency, because these are actually clotting factors, so these Roman numbers are there because there are clotting factors in our plasma, and these are called clotting factors 1 to 10, which is why you have these Roman numerals, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. And these clotting factors usually help our actual body to clot and make sure we have normal um, thickness of our blood. But some people who have cl clotting deficiency problems won't have enough of this. So we inject plasma into them because plasma has a lot of these dissolved. So if we give them plasma, then they have no problem with the clotting deficiency. And another one were these immunoglobins. So obviously the word itself, immuno, refers to the immune system. And globins is a protein. So the globin part means a protein. So these are proteins that help fight infection. And here are a couple of examples. We've got IgG, IgE, IgA. These are all these immunoglobins. And they specifically help fight infectious disease. So for example, so I'll write... Infection, fight infectious disease, that's the use. And for example, if someone has measles, so I write, write, for example, measles. If someone has measles, then they might not actually have um, immune bodies, so immunoglobins against that disease. But we can have these immunoglobins from other people and inject it into them. And that means they now can help fight that infection, that measles infection. So we usually get the immunoglobins and, and put them into people who don't have that immunoglobin themselves, but if they get it from other people, that can help them fight their infection. And for example, measles would be one of those examples where we would inject it into people. And so the top point was students will have to identify the products. These were the products. We have red blood cells, immunoglobins, platelets, plasma, and white blood cells, and discuss the uses of these products. We use red blood cells for a couple of reasons, to prevent anemia, to fight anemia, and for people who have rapid blood loss, such as when they have accidents. Immunoglobins are injected to, for people to help them fight infectious disease. An example is measles. We have chemotherapy, 
So this was why blood cells chemotherapy is used to can fight cancer. And for people who have chemotherapy, they usually have low white blood cells. So we inject white blood cells into them to make sure they have their, a working immune system. Platelets was used for two reasons. Um, for people who suffer from leukemia, because these people would have low platelet counts, so we inject platelets into them. And for people with platelet deficiency disease, to make sure they have normal levels. And also, then again, uh, plasma. Plasma, we have clotting deficiencies. So people who have clotting deficiency will have plasma injected to them because plasma has these clotting factors, 1 to 10, and it helps them to clot their actual blood. Right, so these were the uses and the products. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.